Hi folks, C A Lakshana Ranade here, and I welcome you all to a brand new video, which is about top two fundamentally strong stocks under 500. If you remember, I had done a video on top two stocks under 1000 just few weeks ago, and you all had given me a very positive response for that. Just in case, if you have not watched that video, you can just click the i button, watch that video. But after you complete this video, right? I had also done a live stream uh, when our channel crossed three million. At that time, also I talked about three gems in the live stream. And I had promised you that one stock I discussed in that live stream, but two stocks I will do a separate video. I had promised in that stream, and that's what we are doing today. So I hope you enjoy this video. So keep watching. Let me remind you all one more time that all these creative people are spammers. That's how my account looks like. Also remember, I never give my mobile number in any chat. I neither have an advisory nor do I give any stock tips. And the very first company that we are going to discuss today is Sumitomo Chemicals India Limited. And as usual, we are going to start off by understanding what does the company do. The various products we are going to understand one by one quickly. The very first one is crop protection. So the moment I talk about crop protection, what does the company manufacture? Herbicides, insect, insecticide, fungicides. That's what we checked out in the pre-bumper of the video, right? Second one is plant nutrition and growth. So basically, they manufacture plant growth regulators. I'm sure you might have seen that there are many unwanted small small plants near the main plant, and they hamper the growth of the plant. So to provide max nutrition to the main plant, the company manufactures certain chemicals. Okay, in Marathi we call that as thorn. If you know that. Okay, next one, grain fumigation. Uh, they they manufacture metal phosphides. So uh, if you can uh, connect with this point that uh, those in in whosoever households. If you all store grain, many of the times you might have seen your mom putting some boric powder so that the grain remains in nice quality, right? So that is nothing but grain fumigation example. Next one is rodent control, simple preventing snakes, rats, whatever. Next one is they also manufacture household ins insecticides for prevention of bed bugs. And last one is they are also into animal nutrition, basically feed additives, right? So all these chemicals can be manufactured with two. Uh, two processes one can be a conventional chemistry or it could be a biological process so what type the company manufactures they manufacture in both the ways well now that you have understood the products let's try and analyze what is the revenue breakup or the revenue mix have a look at this pie chart you can very well understand that 45% of the total revenue is contributed only by insecticides herbicides contributes 19% fungicides contributes 11% PGR that is nothing but your plant nutrition and growth. Uh, if you remember, plant growth regulators uh, that contributes eleven percent. Seven percent is contributed by metal phosphides. Uh, if you again recollect, that was in the grain fumigation category and uh, A and D and E S D that is the balance. Uh, your animal nutrition that contributes to only seven percent of the total revenue. Not a major chunk, right? Now uh, one important point about the product mix is that whatever company manufactures as various products, top ten products. Contribute to less than fifty percent of the total revenue. So I can say that overall the diversity is very amazing. So that's definitely a positive point for the company. Now going ahead with the geographical mix, you can very clearly see that eighty-three percent sale is from domestic sale, seventeen percent is export. Any specific country is where you can see that the number is high. Yes, out of that seventeen percent export, twenty-eight percent export comes from Africa, and twenty-one percent comes from South America. So all in all, I hope you have understood the product mix, revenue-wise and geography-wise. Let me tell you a fun fact about the company. Sumitomo Chemical India Limited is a subsidiary of Sumitomo Chemical Company, which is a member of the Sumitomo Group. You might be like, uh, what is the fun fact? Where is the fun fact? All right, wait. Now this Sumitomo Group is one of the largest Japanese business groups, and which was founded by Masatomo Sumi Sumitomo in the year sixteen fifteen. In the year sixteen fifteen, can you even visualize? It was the time when Jahangir had just succeeded his father Akbar as the fourth Mughal emperor. British East India Company was just a trading company. The great Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was not yet even born, and Taj Mahal was still a distant dream as Shah Jahan was not even an emperor then. Oh my God! Such a long history. Now let's understand how Sumitomo Chemicals India Limited grew and how it got listed on the stock exchange. Again, an interesting piece of information. Focus on this chart now. 
First, you can visualize that there is Sumitomo Chemicals Company, which is a Japanese company, right? Then its subsidiary is Sumitomo Chemicals India Private Limited. And there you can see Excel Crop Care, which is the competitor of Sumitomo, the Indian company, which is also into crop protection, right? Now, what happened? The Japanese company acquired a stake in whom? In Excel Crop Care. It also indirectly purchased stake in Excel Crop Care through its subsidiary through its Indian subsidiary, right? So eventually what happened in simple words, let us understand Sumitomo Chemical Company, the Japanese company directly plus indirectly acquired a major stake in Excel Crop Care and that company got merged with Sumitomo Chemical India Private Limited. Eventually what happened? Of course, the private limited company was converted into a public limited company and that got listed on the Indian Stock Exchange in January 2020 as Sumitomo Chemicals India Limited. Now you might be wondering, Bichara Excel Crop Care ke shareholders, uh, what happened to them? Uh, were they in loss? No, Sumitomo Chemical Limited shares were exchanged or were given to the original shareholders of Excel Crop Care. So I hope this part is also clear. If not, you can rewind and recheck this part. Chalo, few more details about the company. Uh, the company has five manufacturing facilities. They have more than 200 brands, 25 patents and more than 200 registrations. Company also has a very strong distribution network, more than 14,000 distributors, more than 40,000 retailers and reaching out to more than 1 million farmers. With that, let's also proceed with the shareholding pattern. That's how the shareholding pattern of the company looks like. 75% of the holding is held by the promoters, of the shares are held by the promoters, 1.95% uh, by mutual funds, insurance companies 4.61% and non-institutional investors 17.21%. Would I want to add two, uh, two quick points. There is an increase in mutual fund holdings from 1.6% to 1.95 percent quarter on quarter and if i'm talking about fii holdings that has also just slightly increased by 0.09 percent moving ahead with financials of sumitomo you can see that if i'm talking about the three major points as usual revenue figures ebitda figures and pat figures revenue figures have consistently grown from financial year 2018 to financial year 21 and cagr is at 11.4 percent EBITDA CAGR is also 26.6% and PAT CAGR is 33.5%. I think that's that's something which is very exceptional where revenue growth is 11%, PAT growth is 33% CAGR. So three times profit is growing in comparison with sales, right? Moving ahead with the quarterly update, first we are going to do a QOQ and then followed by YOY. QOQ figures, if you check, still very nice figures, 46% growth in revenue, 108% growth in EBITDA, PAD growth also 96.3%, YOY also a decent enough performance. Moving ahead with the ratio analysis part, promoter holding is 75%, current ratio is also amazing, 1.9%, uh, ROE return on equity is 24.8%, ROCE 32.3%, PE is just 1.53.2. We are going to talk about that in uh, the coming sections of the video. I hope all in all you have understood that financials of the company are surely above the average. Let's move ahead with few additional observations from the annual report. Uh, if you check the annual report, you'll find that the inventory levels have gone up this year. Management mentions two reasons for the rise in inventory. Number one, they say that we expect a good monsoon because of which demand will be high. That's what. That's why we want more inventory levels at our end. Number two, management says that just in case if supply chain is disrupted because of the third wave, if it happens, we should have a good stacked up inventory so that once things ease up, we can supply inventory as and when required. Number two point that I found what was that the cash and cash equivalents rose from 83 crores in 2020 to 231 crores in 2021. Seems that company has focused more on bettering the working capital management and increasing the cash and cash equivalent balance. But why? Are they planning to do some big expenditure? The answer is yes. In the coming three to five years, company is planning to set up two additional manufacturing plants, one at Bhavnagar and one at The Hage. Company is also planning to launch five new products in the coming year and the management also mentions that it is very much positive on the government schemes which are about minimum procurement price 
on various grains. Last point in the annual report that I would want to point out is that company has uh, the parent company, the Japanese parent company has a very strong focus on R&D. Even if you have a look at this chart, you can see that the number of issued patents that the company has is very high. Even if you compare it with big players like Syngenta, BSF, still the company has a very strong position in R&D. Moving ahead with a very important point now, risks involved. Otherwise, you will say that you are talking only about positive points. What about the negative points? And that's why I'm covering this separately, risks involved. If you remember when I was talking about the financials, I said that there is some point about PE. How much was the PE? It was at 53.2. But if you compare it with the industry average, industry PE comes out to 27.1. So is the stock PE high in comparison with industry PE? Answer is yes. But few analysts believe that because the company has a very strong group backing, that is the reason why the higher side PE is justified. Second one is the stock price. How much returns did it give in the last one year? The returns given by the stock is just 38.2%. You might be like, only 38.2%? Yes, because markets have delivered a return of 60.53%. In simple words, the stock has comparatively underperformed as compared to the overall market returns. Number three is uh, the dependency of the company on monsoons, on government subsidies, on government certain rules and regulations. So just an example, if monsoons don't, I mean, if the uh, rains are below average, automatically their sale of fungicides, pesticides and all that, that's going to be dampened. So that is again one of the risks involved. And last but not the least, certain regulations because finally the company is into chemicals. Recently, we have seen that two products of the company were banned by the government. So if company, if the government says we want more and more of, uh, you know, natural, uh, so bio-friendly, eco-friendly and all that, there can be certain risks which the company's products can face. So the first company that we discussed right now was mainly into crop protection. The second company that we are going to discuss is mainly into processing and extraction of products that are derived from these plants. But which company is that? That's exactly coming in the next part of the video. So let's understand what does the company do? It's mainly into what? It's mainly into agro processing. So like I told in the immediate previous part of the video, they mainly process the products that we derive from plants. So what do they do? Number one, they're into corn and maize processing, manufacturing of starch and its derivatives. Also, they're into solvent extraction. So you can imagine from one liquid, they can, uh, they try to uh, separate out two liquids. Okay, so that is nothing but solvent extraction. Third, they are also into edible oil refining. They are also into manufacture of hydrogenated vegetable oil. Uh, that is nothing but like vanaspati ghee. Uh, they are also into cotton yarn spinning. They are into atta chakki, cattle feed and renewable energy. Oh my God, uh, such a vast variety, right? Uh, but one important point is that it is the largest exporter of corn and corn product derivatives. They currently have manufacturing plants in different states uh, like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Karnataka. Let's move ahead with the revenue mix. If you have a look at this pie chart, you can see that 67% of the revenue comes from domestic sales, 33% comes from export. Now you might be wondering the name of the company is Gujarat Ambuja Exports Limited and only 33% coming from exports. Why? The reason might be that currently they're exporting to 75 plus countries of the world. That's amazing. So they have a presence in six out of seven continents. Fantastic. Okay, now coming to product mix. If you have a look at this table now, 41.6% uh, comes from maize processing segment. 54.8% comes from other agro processing segment. Uh, what does other include? That includes our soya extraction, soya derivatives, edible oil refining, uh, Vanaspati ghee, atta chakki, all that comes up in this segment only. Uh, cotton yarn contributes to 3.4% and power division contributes to just 0.2%. Well, in 1986, they set up their first oil and flour mill at Gujarat. In 1991, Gujarat Ambuja Exports Limited, the company was incorporated and their first solvent extraction plant was also uh, installed at Gujarat. From the years 1999 to 2004, they set up India's largest solvent extraction plant at Akola with 1400 TPD, TPD is tons per day, and also a refinery with 200 TPD. 
In 2005 to 6, this uh, took certain steps towards CSR, wherein they installed four wind turbines, and uh, whatever power is generated from those wind turbines, uh, number one, they use it as the captive consumption, and if any excess electricity is there, then they would sell it out. Uh, to the discoms uh, if you remember a small chunk of the revenue somewhere around 0.2 percent was being generated out of the power segment let's move ahead with the financials but before we move on to financials have a look at the shareholding pattern quickly promoters hold 63.84 percent non-institutional investors with 32.41 percent and a small chunk by fii and dii's one important point here is that the, there is an increase in FIA holdings from 3.02% in March 21 to 3.68% in June 21 and mutual fund holding has been increased by just 0.01%. Moving ahead with the financials, uh, if I'm talking about financial years uh, 2018 to 21, again as usual, I'm talking about revenue, revenue EBITDA and PAT numbers. Revenue CAGR is at 11.8%, EBITDA at 19.8%. And PAT CAGR at 23.4%. All in all, again, I can say very much satisfactory why all key numbers in double digit growth and PAT is growing at double uh, the growth rate as compared to the revenue growth rate, right? If I'm talking about quarterly update, you can see QOQ figures all are in negative. Possible reason could be the COVID second wave. And if I'm talking about YOY, the jump is very nice 23% uh, growth. EBITDA 115.3% growth and PAT growth of 204.9%. If we check at some ratios, current ratio is again solid at 3.8, ROE 22.7%, ROCE 27.8%, promoter holding is at 63.8% and PE is at 9.41%. So now let's come to few important points from the annual report. Company has applied for three licenses on ethanol. I'm sure you are aware about all the ethanol pushed by the government. They are wanting to blend ethanol with petrol and that's why that's coming into the limelight. Out of the three licenses that they have applied, they're expecting that the first license they might be able to get in the second quarter and balance two licenses they're expecting by the end of this year itself. The company says that they have a cost advantage over the grassroots ethanol manufacturing in the country. Why? Because they say that we are into agro uh, processing, right? So half of our back process is already ready. So with just few additions in the existing process, we'll be able to manufacture ethanol at a comparatively lower price. So it'll be interesting to see how the ethanol production in this company pans out. But we have to check out this in the coming few quarters. Let's move on with few risks involved. Uh, their revenue in the latest quarter has significantly dropped from what to what march 21 the other agro processing division revenue which was at 1044.8 crores that has dropped to 435.98 crores in june 21 quarter this is only for the other agro processing division now why am i saying this is a risk because this specific division was contributing to the major chunk of their revenue. That's why it's a point of caution. Second one is that the company's uh, raw material procurement also depends a lot on good monsoon. So, of course, that's not in the hand of the company. So, a, a, a shade lower monsoon or extreme high monsoon can also be of some risk to the company. Well, all in all, I hope you have understood that fundamentally both the companies are above average. But if you were to ask me, which one would you choose out of these two? Would it be Sumetomo or would it be Gujarat Ambuja Exports? Right now, as I'm shooting the video, I feel Sumetomo is a shade better as compared to Gujarat Ambuja Exports. I would want to check out how the ethanol thing pans out for Gujarat Ambuja Export because if it does pan out well, company can have a brighter future. So let's see, wait and watch how both these companies perform in the coming quarters. Let me know which company you felt was better as far as the fundamentals were concerned. Do let me know if you would want me to make more and more such videos about top companies within a specific monetary range. If you have loved this video, don't forget to share it with your friends. Till then, take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye.